Open these out of the building. Fire radio from the fire command. Rescue 2, engine 2, sprint 1, near small marker 11, Great Ocean Highway. I am Lieutenant Jessica Collins. I am the interim head of PIO, and I just want to welcome you guys to a little new series we're going to be doing of PIO vlogs. It's basically taking you guys around the station so that you get to you get to get a feel for what it's like to you know hang out with us or see what we do. Because you guys get to see us when we're on fires and we're on different incidents, but you don't get to see what we do when we're on our downtime or we're back at station. So. I just wanted to introduce myself to you, and uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Today in this video, uh, Fire Chief Dodd is going to be sitting down with Weasel News for a lovely little interview, and yeah, you might get some insight into his thought processes, get to know him a little bit better, and all around, I think it was a very good time. I just want to say a special thank you to Weasel News as well as Piper for coming by and doing the interview with us, but with that, Let's get right into the video. Yeah, I've dedicated myself to this department for quite a while. Uh, I've gone through the ranks twice now, and uh, first time holding the uh, chief's position. And uh, we're excited for the new things that we've uh, we've been able to provide to the state and uh, to our firefighters as well. Kind of when you say you know things provide the state, what kind of things do you mean? Well, we've uh, recently cut medical portions out of our uh, our training. We're no longer providing um, high levels of medical care to the city. Um, recently, our department went through a split where we uh, removed SAFR and um, SAEMS into two separate uh, entities, still under the same department, still under the same roof, but uh, it allows people that have more of an interest in medical operations or more of an interest in fire operations to focus on those specific areas in the departments. Um, for example, like uh, myself, I'm, I'm not particularly medically inclined, um, but I do have a wealth of, of fire knowledge and it allows myself to focus more on the fire end and develop the, uh, the fire department specifically so that you know I'm not putting input into the medical operation when I have you know, no interest in the medical side of things. And it allows the, the medical team to develop their side of things a lot more thoroughly. Um, so several new policies and new developments have come from this and um, other things have been cut and such. Uh, a good example of this is our um, budgets have split. We've changed the way that we uh, hire individuals for each department. Um, so even though we're we're still collecting the same um, fees and stuff, it's it's split between the two departments, which is a lot a lot more beneficial in the end because you don't have um, people that are low ranking EMS professionals, and now you have a lot more uh, steady medical professionals that are going to be available to the state. A lot more steady firefighters going to be available to the state, and and you can guarantee that they're going to be you know up to the maximum standards possible for that position. That sounds like a lot of good changes then. Yeah, it's, it's quite a bit. I think overall we've had um, about 20 policy changes uh, since the, the time of the split. And, you know, a lot of good news, a lot of favorable changes that have that have happened and occurred, and um, it really reflects with the firefighters around you know the state. It it shows that they they no longer have to you know dedicate to something that they're not happy with, and it, they no longer have to feel like they're being dragged into work just to to do something that they don't want to do. They come into work happy. They come into work ready to you know protect the city at any cost, and. Um, it's a lot more beneficial all around.
Yeah, just uh, move away from the fire department for a little bit. How about you, uh, you tell me a little about yourself, you know? What interests and hobbies do you have as the new fire chief? Um, well, uh, I'm still young. I'm still 23, so uh, <laughs> I'm still I still enjoy you know night out with friends and everything like that. Being able to uh, enjoy comedy clubs and stuff. Uh, quite a shame that the recent comedy club has shut down, gone under new ownership. But we're we're hoping that uh, some of those will open back up. Um, so I, I spend a lot of time you know socializing with other firefighters around and um, a lot of time with my family as well. It's kind of hard to do now that most of my family's back in West Virginia, but we're uh, we're making do. So, how would you describe your life in San Andreas? As of lately, hectic, very hectic. It seems like a lot of the time that I uh, spend on sh on shift, I'm I'm, you know, running command or. Uh, trying to seek out new uh, command members for our department and new leadership in our department. And then off shift, you know, is a lot of the focus on um, meetings with the state, meetings with um, the board of directors, meetings with small companies that want to do sponsorships and stuff like that. And there's there's a lot of overhead and a lot of paperwork, but there's some, some interesting changes that will be coming down the way. Um, good example of things that we've been working on lately is um, we've recently taken purchase of new uh, vehicles. Those were delivered quite recently. Um, they're still in our storage facility right now and they're getting our final checks from our maintenance department. But when they arrive, they should be quite, uh, quite an interesting asset to provide to the state and a lot of new tools, a lot of new equipment and um, makes our job easier and makes it a lot uh, safer to protect the city and the county as well. Could you talk a little bit more about the specifics of these new vehicles and equipment? Yeah. Um, so we've decided to replace our uh, our city fleet, our city apparatus, um, uh, in conjunction with the removal of uh, EMS from the fire department. We've been able to purchase a new engine. So um, we're going to have both engine five and engine one in the city. Uh, engine five is going to be a high rise pumper it's going to be a side mount pump the engine one is going to be a flat top pumper both of which are provided to us by pierce uh, manufacturing quality apparatus we're really happy with how they've come out and the um the wraps that they've been able to put on these vehicles the amount of man hours that have gone into them really reflects on on the quality of the apparatus as well so far from the tests that we've had um, they look promising. A couple of things that need to be changed, but uh, overall they're they're quite nice. We're also going to see the return of a previous apparatus that was uh, taken out of service due to some accidents and stuff. Um, we've been able to replicate. Uh, we've been able to replicate that, and we've uh, recently recreated that apparatus in uh, a different image. Um, so we're going to be sporting a new walk-in rescue uh, that's going to be labeled as Rescue 5. And we may be seeing a Rescue 1 as well that has yet to be purchased. Other than that, most of the county apparatus uh, will remain the same with some updates and changes. Um, we're looking to get uh, vinyl wraps on those that match the city fleet as well along with some new tools and new equipment for all of them. Sounds like a busy time for the fire department then. Uh, if I may ask, why did you join the fire department in the first place? Uh, my initial reason for joining, I like helping people. I really enjoy protecting, you know, what I value and and the, the people that I care about. And I felt like the best way to do that was um, to contribute something that, that I both enjoy and allow me to protect people. And that was the fire department. You know, I, I thought quite a while about going into law enforcement, but uh, in my personal opinion, I don't think that the law enforcement get the respect that they deserve, uh, especially now in day and age with, uh, 
with the age of electronics and stuff like that, you know, everything ends up on social media outlets and, um, you know, the term one bad apple ruins the bunch uh, it seems to be the case nowadays. Uh, a lot of people don't respect him very well, and uh, I wanted to be in a position where I felt like I was doing good and other people thought that I was doing good as well. And I hate, you know, providing something to the public just to, in turn, feel like we're being disrespected. And I feel like the fire department has provided what I needed in that aspect. I talked a little bit about it, but what is the full job of being fire chief in Dale? Um, a lot of paperwork. <laughs> a lot, <laughs> a lot of paperwork. Um, a lot of late nights uh, staying at the station, trying to make sure that um, the pay is taken care of, making sure that the uh, state feels like we're providing adequate, adequate coverage, um, ensuring that the policies are kept up proper, and uh, general supervision of the department as well. User in your channel, time What would down. you say the hardest parts or challenges of being Fire Chief are? Um, definitely the time dedication. You know, it takes a lot of, User lot of man entered hours your channel. To, uh, to make the, the things that we do possible. And um, unfortunately, it all, it all starts with me and flows down. So there's uh, a lot of time spent in this department, a lot of time spent dedicating to making sure that the firefighters are provided for, to make sure that the department has what we need to to be successful. All right. Uh, what would you say that your successes as chief are so far? Yeah. So we got a meeting room there, which I think an interview's happening. Uh, I would say so far it's. Um, it's noticed with the firefighters the the general joy that they have of coming into work and you know that's everything if people enjoy coming into work then the job is going to be done with excellence and pride and uh, that's that's what the the fire service is all about having you know taking pride and ownership in what you do and making sure that you both respect and enjoy the Well, certainly nothing wrong with having a bit of pride in your work. Um, what would you like to see from firefighters under your command? Would that be attitudes, their skills, talents? I'm sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Uh, what uh, do you wish to see from firefighters under your command in your department? Um, I expect to see that they, they genuinely want to be here. Um, I don't like the the idea of getting a job simply because you need the money and all that. You should want to be here. You should want to do this job because if you're not interested in what you do, then then you're not going to continue to learn every single day. Um, it's very crucial with the fire department, the job that can kill you, to learn every single day about things that you may not have understood in the first place. Um, with new construction being done, new developments, uh, advancements, you have to continue to learn every single day about the things that that are being developed so that you can stay one step ahead of the game. Um, also expect that you're, you're honest, you're respectful, and you're courteous of others in the area. Um, that's kind of the, the hallmarks of being a firefighter is making sure that you, that you adhere to those standards. And do you think your department does a good job of uh, living up to those standards? I think that we've gone through some long strides recently, and um, with the new changes that have that have come out, there's there's definitely been a, a big rise in that, and it's it's gotten much much better. But there is still a good ways to go. Um, you know, we're maybe a month into the new leadership and the new changes, and. Um, it's big to adapt everybody to these new changes and uh, so far it looks good but 
you know, continued improvements, continued time will will really help the department. So in a related question, what attributes do you want to see in potential candidates to the fire department? Is it, you know, a lot of the same? It is, yeah. Um, I want them to, to strive to make themselves better every single day. Um, I don't like people being stagnant in the position that they're in. Uh, the idea and the concept of getting to a position, staying there, and not improving is horrendous. I think it's awful. You should always want to go up. You should always want to make yourself better. And especially in a job where you're protecting the public, you're serving the public, you need to be the best that you can possibly be. And um, that's all I can ask from people is can you come in, do the best that you can possibly do, and um, you know, go home, be with your family. So, in your time as fire chief, what do you think is the most difficult scene you've had to command? That's a, that's a tough one. Um, I tell you, a lot lately, I really haven't been working command a lot. Uh, the most of what it's been is, is teaching the new generation of firefighters to, to eventually take the position that, that we came from. Um, with the split and the change, we lost quite a bit of command members. Um, and some move to different areas of the, of the department and over to EMS as well. So bringing in the support that we need to maintain the, uh, the population of firefighters and the safety of the public um, meant that we had to dedicate quite a bit of time to that. So most of my time has been spent working on developing those individuals. Um, and I'd say most of them really haven't been that difficult. Uh, there's been, a, you know, a couple of unfortunate scenes recently that um, that have taken the turn for the worse, and you know, regrettably, some injuries on certain uh, law enforcement officers and civilians that uh, unfortunately were unpreventable. But um, for the most part, I myself haven't been in charge of very many recently. All right. That's another question for you is, how do you feel relations are between your department and other emergency service departments? I think it's definitely getting a lot better than what it used to be. Um, previously, the fire department was uh, kind of withholding things from certain departments, but um, you know, we we try to improve our standing with everybody um, and make sure that you know we're inclusive of everybody else and that we're you know providing the best possible care to the, the citizens as much as we can so um it reflects negatively when when that department has a bad reputation with everybody else and like i said it's a slow process but i think as of as of the time being we've uh, improved that standing quite a bit great to hear it Is there anything you believe the state government can do to further support the fire department? Um, I think we've had great support from the uh, from the community and especially the, our government. I think that um, if if anything could be changed, it would just be to uh, be more involved with what's going on. It uh, seems like you don't really hear much of them other than a couple of political debates and such but uh, it'd be nice to be able to um, have them present more have more face-to-face -face conversations instead of you know over the web conversations <laughs> it's a lot better when the, uh, the areas are being run properly there's a lot more um, participation from certain ends of the government and that's that's always great to see um, just more continued work on that is is think all that they really need.
Okay, that was my last question for you. Do you have any questions for me? No, ma'am. Well, then we are done here. Thank you for your time. Thank you.